the new MacBook Air M2. Midnight is the best colour, but should you buy it? I've talked about it before and people keep asking, so why is everyone so afraid of scratching the MacBook Air in midnight and is it justified? Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell. In this video we'll be covering how Apple's aluminium products are made, what anodizing is, how Apple's design affects the durability of these finishes, specifics about the MacBook Air's design, why midnight is problematic and how to mitigate the issue. Apple have talked in the past about how the unibody MacBooks are made and in case you're unaware, Apple's unibody process is how the MacBook shell bodies are milled from a block of aluminium rather than making layers, which is what most PC makers do, which are kind of thinner layers and don't produce such a rigid result. Apple machines these parts using huge numbers of CNC or computer numerically controlled mills, cutting the holes for every key on the keyboard, mounting points for the logic boards, ports for your USB-C and MagSafe connections, and much more. CNC basically means that these are milled to very exact intolerances and this can contribute to the finish that you see on your Macs. Once those parts are machined, they will have visible marks from the tooling, so the next step is to bead blast the surface, basically firing very fine beads of zirconia at the surface, more or less sand size at very high velocities, which gives the iconic finish of the Macs and diffuses light that hits the surface, giving it that matte satin finish. Then we can anodize the parts, which is the process that gives the finish to the parts, whether we're adding colour or not. This process consists of about five steps, cleaning, etching, anodizing, colouring and sealing. That cleaning step basically removes any grease or oils left over from the extrusion and machining processes in a bath of strong alkali or acid liquid. The etching then uses an acid bath to remove any surface imperfections and then the material is rinsed for anodizing. This rinsing basically happens between each step, so I won't mention it every time. In the anodizing tank, the anodic coating is created as the electrical current is passed through the sulfuric acid bath and this can create enough heat that the acid bath itself has to actually be refrigerated. Oxygen atoms are released from this electrolyte which combines with the aluminium forming an aluminium oxide coating or what is essentially aluminium rust on the outside. Now the immersion time is carefully monitored so that the thickness of the finish can be controlled and the actual finish is about twice the depth of how much uh, metal on the surface is dissolved by the acid. The parts are then rinsed again with deionized water to ensure a uniform finish. Now this is the interesting part next. The anodic coating has a porous surface which can basically be dyed to the desired colour with the dyes leaching into the surface itself. This is then sealed in the final step with nickel acetate which closes the pores and provides a durable surface. So, anodizing provides a very durable finish on aluminium devices. So what's the problem here? Well, durability, pretty much like everything else, is relative, and there are differences between how different anodized colors will show wear. I'm sure this will eventually become midnight gate or scratch gate or wear gate at some point, for Apple because everyone loves to have a gate with every new product. But this finish is basically no different from what they've used on all of their products for years and years. Where the problem comes is the delta between the colour of the finish on the metal and the metal below it. So I think there's good reason that for many, many years Apple's aluminium devices were silver and only silver. Remember how revolutionary it was when we got Space Grey MacBook Pros? Everyone lost their minds. Now, having these devices in silver only basically meant that they would stay looking brand new for as long as possible. For example, here is my 2011 MacBook Air 11 inch that I use as a full time system on the road out and about for many years up until about 2018. And then my wife started using it as her main system. Anything beyond close examination of this thing and it basically looks brand new. And that's because any scratches, even deeper gouges, reveal just the same silver that the surface finish is. The iPhone 5 was the first time that Apple used coloured aluminium with their slate colour, because until then, basically any colours that they put onto an iPhone, the back of the iPhone 3 or 3G, or the black and white of the iPhone 4 and 4S came from plastics and glass. Now when I saw this coming on the iPhone 5, I immediately switched over to the white and silver model for one reason. At the time I was playing paintball pretty regularly and tournament paintball markers, the guns, are milled aluminium and 
that is then anodized into various different colors. And I'd seen the state that these things got into after a little bit of use. Scratches and wear would all show through that bare silver aluminium underneath. And I knew what state these slate models would get into after a few months of their lives. Now, if you remember around the iPhone 6 generation, Apple branched out into space gray and gold colors for their iPhones as well, staying away from the bolder slate color and went with more subtle, closer to raw metal colors. Even more importantly, the edges of these were curved instead of the clean bezels and corners of the iPhone 5 and 5S. In retrospect, I'd actually put money on those curves being more of a reaction to the aluminium wear rather than an aesthetic design choice. This phone, for example, is an iPhone 6 and take a look at that. Does it look super old? Does it look super ruined no those rounder edges really hide any scratches the selling point of that iphone 6 series by the way was uh, and why it was such a huge hit was the increased display sizes and while the design direction was pretty meh for most i think that rounded design stayed with us right up until the iphone 11 generation basically to allow the finishes to be improved in the background. And this design style also extended to the Apple Watch with its curved edges. It could well be that the reason the flat design was potentially pulled at the last minute last year was actually that the aluminium models suffered bad wear markings on the sharper corners. Wearables, of course, are prone to more knocks in general and wear than most other devices because you're wearing it on your wrist and you're probably going to bash it into stuff. And it seems that Apple might only be producing these new flatter designs that we'd heard about in the premium material now uh, the stainless steel and possibly titanium as a pro option i remember when the uh, red iphone 12s also got loads of press bad press because the color was fading on the edges seems like it all fits together so all of this takes us back to the macbook air and its midnight finish i've got to say i think the fingerprint magnet status of this laptop is pretty overblown um it does show them but i think after a week they are not going to really show up at all because Basically, you're going to saturate the whole of the surface with, like, finger juice and stuff. I know it sounds gross, but it's just what happens to things. And while we're on that topic, don't forget, everyone was complaining that these things might get white keyboards and how awful they'd look after a bit of use. iMacs have had white keyboards forever. You just have to clean your things, guys. Just because it's black doesn't mean it's not minging. Anyway, the fingerprint magnet thing is accurate, but overblown. So don't worry about that part of it. That is the least of your problems. But there are some design points that could cause some issues with this design in terms of anodizing wear. And I think this is more of an issue. So first of all, around the USB-C ports, they are very sharp edges. They are not radiused at all. And there are likely to be some scratches there. I would not be surprised if we see some of these issues changed in further versions of the MacBook Air, slightly refining the design so that these issues don't happen or we might see the midnight color just disappear quietly. We also, of course, have the MagSafe port, and the MagSafe magnets are very strong, so the cable is pulled in with quite some force. The magnets will also help to keep this aligned, but there's still a likelihood of chipping around the edges of this, which would quickly show the color below. Perhaps more annoying for most people, though, would be that finger gap on the front of the trackpad where you lift the lid. The indent is machined out, but it leaves uncomfortably sharp points where the indent begins on either side, and those will almost certainly become worn down quite quickly from normal use and become little points of silver either side of that gap. I'd actually say as well, if you wear a watch with a metal strap, as I was doing when I unboxed this, I was wearing an Apple watch with a Milanese loop, expect to see a silver align appearing on the front side of the palm rest as with the rest of the design there is no radius to this area it's basically a sharp 90 degree corner which will very likely be one of the first places to start showing bare metal coming through so if you must have this beautiful midnight color and i understand why you would want it because it does look awesome what can you do to mitigate these issues first of all i would minimize the amount of devices that you plug in and out during normal use luckily the battery life on these things is incredible. Just be really careful when you attach your MagSafe charger to it. And I would say stick with the MagSafe charger as much as you can. I'm personally of the opinion that these lightweight laptops are best used with cloud or wireless network storage and devices. So there's less of that plugging and unplugging than there was in the past. And wireless displays using universal control or airplay with Apple TV is a really good way of minimizing the amount that you need to plug these things in when you're at a desk too. And if you do need to plug in and remove multiple devices a day, 
grab yourself a little dock, plug that in at the start of your day and do your plugging and unplugging with a dock. That will also help. I'll leave some uh, links in the description to the items that I've used in the past. I've been sent a few docks for review with the M1 MacBook Air, which will work just as well with this. Should you perhaps protect it with a hard shell case? No, step away from the buy button on Amazon. Those things are a travesty against humanity and nobody should be doing that. If you're gonna buy this laptop because it looks amazing and you wanna choose this color because it looks superb, why on earth would you put it in a cheap, crappy plastic case to keep it looking nice and never see it looking nice? You, it's just such a weird choice. I don't understand it. Now, I have the same opinion on iPhone cases, by the way, but what I would suggest is some sort of a soft slip case, either a neoprene or something with like a nice kind of soft inside, like a, a wool inside, that you can keep it in when it's going into your backpack. You could even get one that you actually keep in your backpack and it's just like a little slip that you drop it into at the back that makes it nice and easy to grab, but it keeps it protected away from your keys, your knives, your firearms, and so on that would be rattling around in there. Now, I know that the biggest proportion of my audience are American, so I just assume that that's what you keep in rucksacks. I would also say, probably don't go for a metal watch strap if you wear an Apple Watch. There are fabric options that are really good, or like the Solo Loop that doesn't have any uh, clasp on it at all. I actually think that these standard Apple Watch straps that have the little metal uh, peg in there could even be enough to cause damage to these, so do be careful with that. Save metal link bands or Milanese loops for your fancy nights out, though not daily typing with these. Of course, the other option is to go for a different color. Now, if you want something that will look brand new for the longest, silver is the safest bet, but it also won't stand out. That's the problem. It will look just like any other MacBook that's been out there for a while to anyone that's not a proper Apple geek and is looking for those kind of 90 degree corners rather than the old kind of curved backs and we know that looking cool is a big important part of why we all buy a Mac. So Starlight comes in a close second to silver and then at least people will know you're cool enough to have the new MacBook Air at a glance because it's the first Mac to ever come in this colour. Space Grey even will be less noticeable than on the midnight and we all know that that's the boy colour. Any damage on that around the edges will just look like reflections. It's a slightly lighter coloured metal coming through a slightly darker coloured metal. It's not a big issue. By the way, I was being sat satirical when I said it's a boy colour, just buy the one that you think looks the coolest. <laughs> and that is obviously the dark blue anyway. This midnight colour does look stunning. Now, I doubt that Apple will ever go to a matte black, uh, despite the protest of MKBHD, who needs matte black everything. So, sorry, Mr. HD. Also, aren't all your videos in 8K by now and shot by robots? HD seems a little bit old hat. But anyway, for me, this was the obvious choice, because dark mode always. It's obvious that damage will show up more on this, but it's a trade-off for having what is clearly the coolest model in the lineup, and God, it looks cool. I just hope it still looks cool tomorrow. <laughs> Speaking of tomorrow, there will be more videos then, but if you haven't subscribed, you might never know about that. If you have questions about this or any other Apple stuff in general, use the hashtag IKVanswers down in the comments section and I'll answer them in a future video, regardless of how dumb your question is. Also, thanks to my wonderful Patreons who support all of the videos on this channel, and if you like the format, smash the like button 2022 style, just mind the finish on it. Don't want to scratch it. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell.